morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Solves, and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about a six-day severe thunderstorm outbreak across parts of Queensland and New South Wales. We'll also talk about some rainfall up in the central parts of Queensland, which could be heavy at times. A massive low-pressure system expected to dominate the New South Wales and Victoria weather scene next week. And we'll also give a brief outlook at the Bathurst 1000 race weather forecast for you later on this update. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The support in the videos lately has been much appreciated, and I apologise for the lack of upload yesterday. Today, we're going to get stuck straight back into daily uploads from today onwards. So let's start things off over in Queensland. You can see that there is a little bit of cloud and a low pressure system active across South Australia and parts of extreme western Queensland, bringing some rainfall around the Mount Isa area. Now this low pressure area and the uh, winds that are streaming across the central parts of Queensland now are going to become f uh, important to the forecast later on. So let's break it down for you hour by hour from now. Like I said, a few showers and storms still across Mount Isa at this time, but we're more interested in the showers and storms that are be firing up across the southeastern parts of Queensland from tomorrow onwards. We'll get to that in just a second. You can see here as a low pressure system materializes uh, along a trough line across central parts of New South Wales from tomorrow afternoon and evening, we're going to be seeing showers and storms fire up across much of central New South Wales, parts of northeastern New South Wales, and then central southern Queensland around Charleville, Roma, uh, St George, and then down towards Lightning Ridge and Moree in New South Wales. We'll be seeing a couple of thunderstorms fire up there later on tomorrow afternoon. And these thunderstorms are expected to be isolated. They're also expected to remain as pulse thunderstorms, i.e. non-severe storms here, so nothing really worth worrying about. We could see a couple of cells in New South Wales go severe tomorrow afternoon, but for Queensland, that doesn't look like a possibility. Now, early into Tuesday morning, we're going to see this low pressure system continue to pull further into the Tasman Sea. It's kind of just out of range of where I'm looking at on this forecast map at this time. But from Tuesday afternoon, you can see a bunch of thunderstorms and potentially severe ones fire up across the northeast of New South Wales, particularly around the Coffs Harbour the Grafton and Lismore area. Now some of these severe cells with isolated patches of large hailstones and damaging winds do look likely to make their way into the extreme southern Queensland around the Toowoomba and Ipswich area. However, it looks like the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast do miss out on the storm. Same story with the Brisbane metro area. Uh, we've also got the chance of non-severe thunderstorms out in the western half of New South Wales around Broken Hill, Cobar, Wanaring, and even up towards Windora and Birdsville in the uh, extreme southwestern corners of Queensland. So it is going to be quite a widespread thunderstorm storm outbreak on Tuesday and these storms continuing through Tuesday and into Wednesday when the forecast does become quite interesting for severe thunderstorms. Now on the latest forecasts I have highlighted Wednesday the 16th of October as being the highest chance for severe thunderstorms around the northeast of New South Wales and also into the southeast of Queensland and this is going to be impact, uh, brought uh, together by extremely high temperatures for this time of the year across parts of Queensland and New South Wales and a low pressure system just offshore from the northeast of New South Wales coastline. We're going to see temperatures fly up up into the high 30s uh, on Wednesday afternoon and even into the low 40s for parts of southwestern Queensland. It'll be a little bit cooler around the Brisbane area but just the mixing of cooler and warmer temperatures and the high levels of winter and instability in the environment will give way to some nasty severe thunderstorms around the Toowoomba, Warwick and Ipswich area later on in the afternoon of Wednesday. It's going to be a very isolated uh, weather event. We're not expecting widespread severe thunderstorms along the Queensland coastline on Wednesday. It is going to be just kind of concentrated to this specific corner of Queensland, but if we do get a thunder cell fire up in a very good environment, you bet it is going to go severe. We're expecting the chance of some pretty nasty severe thunderstorms on Wednesday afternoon. However, just considering the isolated nature of these systems and how uh, kind of confined they will be to the Toowoomba, Warwick, Chinchilla, Kingaroy sort of area, I reckon we might only see two or three severe thunderstorm warnings go out, but when they do go out, they will be for damaging winds, large hailstones, and isolated pockets of heavy to intense rainfall, so we're going to have a lot of severe impacts possible. Thursday afternoon, a few more thunderstorms fire up, especially across the northeastern of, uh, parts of New South Wales and then into the central parts of New South Wales. Also a chance of severe thunderstorms in this little pocket here between Cobar, Dubbo and Griffith. But again, nothing too crazy expected on Thursday afternoon. And then another round of severe thunderstorms will eke into Queensland and the New South Wales weather forecast with the passage of a low pressure system on Friday. Again, it's going to be a very isolated severe thunderstorm outbreak when they do fire up um, on Friday the 18th of October around the uh, Toowoomba and Warwick area and a few uh, thunderstorms also possible into the northeastern corner of New South Wales. And then the same story again for Saturday, a few thunderstorms expected in the afternoon and evening hours, but nothing too crazy or severe expected there. Thunderstorms just look to be dominating the forecast now, especially for the next 10 days. 
days. I've counted nine uh, out of the next 14 days as a chance of thunderstorms on the long range forecast. So they're going to be pretty consistent for uh, southeastern Queensland, especially for the northeast of New South Wales as well. So we're going to have some pretty significant weather events to deal with now on the forecast here. The majority of these uh, thunderstorms do look to be dominating the northeastern New South Wales weather scene, but when they do get themselves up to Queensland, they're just going to have that bit extra energy to uh, do um, or go severe with. So we could certainly be talking about the higher chances of severe thunderstorms across parts of Queensland uh, as opposed to New South Wales. However, th uh, Wednesday is certainly the day where we're going to be seeing those severe thunderstorms fire up Tuesday and Wednesday, the 15th and 16th of October. Make sure you are ready for some severe thunderstorm action. It is going to be quite hairy indeed uh, when these storms do go severe. There'll be more updates as well over the coming couple of days. In terms of rainfall for parts of New South Wales, some very good accumulations are expected. And considering how consistent we're expecting these thunderstorms to be over the next 10 days, I'm expecting rainfall accumulations to be above 100 millimetres for some locations, specifically around the Dubbo, Orange, Bathurst and Lithgow sort of area, and then up around the Tamworth, and then even across towards the Coffs Harbour, Armidale and Grafton sort of area, there's going to be some good pockets of some high rainfall accumulations over the next 10 days. Now again from thunderstorms, this forecast isn't entirely accurate or entirely reliable. Uh, you're just going to have to kind of play it by ear and see what thunderstorms do fire up your way on the radar, but I am certainly expecting the chance of a lot of locations to get some good rainfall accumulations at least at some point over the next seven days, just considering with how the forecast is lining up. Into the southeast of Queensland, the rainfall does become a little bit more uncertain. The highest accumulations will be around the Toowoomba and Warwick area, most likely on Tuesday and Wednesday, with Brisbane and the Gold Coast unfortunately missing out on, again, some much-needed rainfall there. However, next part of the video, we will talk about the much-needed rainfall up in the central parts of Queensland. It's not all doom and gloom for Queensland on the rainfall front. In fact, we do have some good forecast rainfall there. So let's head up to central Queensland now, specifically between the Mackay and Cairns area. We've got some rain that's expected to fire up over the coming couple of hours with a bit of a rainfall event expected tomorrow and we are talking about some heavy rainfall at that. So as you can see on the satellite picture here, some cloud now starting to develop across the Coral Sea with a low pressure trough extending up from the Queensland, co uh, down the Queensland coastline, uh, down to about Townsville from a low pressure area that's expected to continue to materialise across central parts of Queensland around Mount Isa. It is a pretty complex low pressure system and a pretty complex weather story here but what we're going to see is a trough extend across from a monsoonal low pressure system over PNG and the Solomon Islands and once it gets itself over some more favourable areas uh, for storm development around the central Queensland coastline from later on tonight into tomorrow morning we're going to see a bunch of showers and storms start to blow up along the Queensland coastline specifically between Cardwell and Ogmore including Mackay, Bowen, uh, Airlie Beach, Proserpine and even inland towards Charters Towers, uh, Juricho and uh, across towards Longreach as well so some good rainfall is possible there and those showers and storms being pretty persistent throughout Monday morning into Monday afternoon with some heavy falls possible specifically around the Townsville and Charters Towers areas in the early hours of Monday afternoon. So it is going to get quite wet for quite an extended period of time up there. Uh, the rainfall easing off by Tuesday morning and contracting up towards the Cassowary Coast between Cairns and Cardwell where some good falls are possible there up towards 50 millimetres of rainfall to the 9am on Tuesday is expected. But the heaviest accumulations will be around the Townsville area, specifically Ingham, Cardwell and then down towards air. I'm expecting those areas to remain the wettest. Townsville has that notorious random effect where they get much uh, less rainfall in comparison to surrounding locations and I think that is going to be well and truly at play here. If I was to put a number on the Townsville rainfall accumulations I'm probably going to say between 10 and 30 millimetres and it's a pretty uncertain 10 to 30 millimetres at that. Under the right conditions Townsville could pick up a lot of rainfall but it looks like it's going to be more likely dry than it is going to be wetter. However inland towards Ravenswood, Charters Towers and even along the coastline around Ingham, Cardwell and Air, expecting some very good rainfall accumulations potentially up towards 80 millimetres of the stuff which is far higher than what the forecast is suggesting. I mean take a look at this just across the next uh, 36 hours, or uh, not the next 36, the next 60 hours rather, two and a half days. There are some good pockets of rainfall expected outside of Townsville up towards 80 millimetres of rainfall and then down towards Yalbaru and Proserpine up towards 70 millimetres of rainfall expected there and even some good accumulations expected inland around Murunba and Claremont and even down towards Emerald accumulations between 25 and 50 millimetres look to be fairly widespread. Some very good rainfall is now possible uh, up across the central parts of Queensland and it will be heavy at times. However, it's not going to be heavy enough to cause 
cause flooding. I would expect a chance of minor flooding in some uh, rivers that already have water in them, uh, especially Monday evening and early Tuesday morning, but it is going to be very isolated and I'm not expecting it to be a widespread flooding problem. Definitely nothing in the moderate or major thresholds as well, but some very good rainfall accumulations are possible and this isn't something that a lot of people are talking about in the Australian forecasting world. So again, heads up for locations around Townsville and Bowen or just towards the northwest of Townsville specifically. Some very good rainfall is on the cards and this is unseasonable for this time of the year. Typically, this type of rainfall starts to pipe up in about a month's time or so, so it is certainly an earlier than usual start to the rainfall. Now, in terms of other forecasts as well, you can see the GFS just being too low resolution to crank out the data required to make an accurate forecast here, but they are still calling for that rainfall event along the Queensland coastline, and the Axis G3, which is the Bureau of Meteorology's own forecast model, isn't calling for much in the way of rainfall either. I think the way the Eastern Bf does it, including the thunderstorms in the forecast where the heaviest of rainfall will be, paints a much more accurate picture. Even though rainfall accumulations are going to be between that sort of 5 to 25 millimetres for the most part, I do like the way the Eastern Bf model has high highlighted the chance of much higher accumulations between that 80 to 100 millimeter mark. Now again, any questions or comments on this weather event, please do leave them in the comment section down below. It is an interesting and unseasonable weather event for this time of the year, but in terms of central Queensland and far north Queensland, it is certainly going to be much welcome rainfall indeed. Now just before we head over to Bathurst and talk about the weather and the race uh, forecast down there, which spoiler alert is looking amazing, we have to talk about a, bit, a big low pressure system rather that's going to materialize across parts of New South Wales and Victoria. Uh, over the coming couple of days. So we do have some pretty nasty thunderstorms now on the forecast, especially from Tuesday onwards. Just a widespread expanse of thunderstorms and potentially severe ones as well, extending across uh, Victoria and New South Wales. The pressure contours are very close together, which means that we're looking at some pretty nasty weather now on the forecast uh, along a trough line stretching down the western half of New South Wales. So that will give way to some thunderstorms that are on the forecast for Tuesday and Wednesday, and potentially severe ones as well along the uh, foothills, stretching between Dubbo and Orange, uh, down towards even Albury in Victoria. We're expecting some thunderstorms there. It's just going to be the southeastern corner of New South Wales that misses out on thunderstorms on Tuesday evening, but they will pipe up again on Wednesday afternoon, potentially severe ones as well along the Victoria's uh, kind of southwestern coastline. I'm definitely highlighting the chance of potentially severe thunderstorms there. Uh, and then a low-pressure system is going to dominate the weather scene, and once this low-pressure system gets itself in, bringing a lot of heavy rainfall by Thursday afternoon and Friday morning to the northern coast of Tasmania, it's also going to be bringing some heavy thunderstorms, some pretty severe thunderstorms as well, to parts of southern New South Wales and north central Victoria around the Bendigo, Ballarat, Albury, and then up in towards Griffith, uh, Cobar, and that sort of area for New South Wales. And Friday afternoon, there's going to be some pretty nasty severe thunderstorms to wrap up the working week. Uh, so again, make sure you are taking it very easy on the roads on the commute sun um, Friday afternoon if you do live outside of Canberra in this general area of New South Wales. Just a heads up, some widespread nasty thunderstorms are now on the forecast. Perfect conditions for them. High temperature temperatures, high humidity, lots of instability in the atmosphere with this low pressure system. It is going to be a strong one indeed. And just considering how intense it is, well, I'm expecting very high tides on Friday afternoon along the coast of Tasmania and around the Victoria uh, coastline as well, especially into Port Phillip Bay. This low pressure system is going to drive a lot of water up there and it is going to give way to some pretty high tides Friday afternoon, evening and even in towards Saturday morning as well. And then a return to cle uh, clearer, calmer conditions on Saturday and Sunday. In fact, cool conditions as well. It's going to be pretty humid on Saturday and Sunday with the uh, wake of this low pressure system moving through and a weak high pressure system building. Another cold front moving through on Monday and Tuesday next week. It's certainly going to be a pretty interesting week and a pretty volatile week of weather for parts of Victoria and New South Wales, especially New South Wales, with a lot of thunderstorms on the forecast. And it's going to be something we're going to talk about over the coming couple of days on weather updates. But yeah, very interesting, a very strong low pressure system expected to bring these thunderstorms. Typical for this time of the year, but again, stronger than usual, more intense than usual, and a greater chance of severe thunderstorms than usual. Now just to wrap this video up we're going to head over towards Bathurst outside of Sydney and talk about the race day weather for the Bathurst 1000 race. It's a pretty uh, niche race again widely uh, known around the Australian community uh, especially into the racing community as well it is the day of days for uh, racing uh, but it is still fairly unknown I guess for the greater public of Australia so if this isn't your cup of tea uh, this video is over for you. But around Bathurst uh, race lovers you'd be pleased to know, very pleased to know that we're expecting no rainfall for the first time in a couple of years 
as well, I believe, around the uh, race, which is fantastic to see. And I'm expecting a very quick race today. It's going to be very pleasant conditions, not too warm either. 20 degrees, the maximum expected. So very pleasant viewing conditions as well. And I'm expecting the race to be at or near record time. It's going to be a late maxima as well around the Bathurst area. So it's going to clear up to be a beautiful day. I believe there is a couple of clouds around Bathurst right now. Just a few clouds, but I'm expecting those to clear out later on this afternoon uh, to give way for a perfect or a textbook finish, which is going to be great to see. Of course, I'm backing Mustang for... It's a shame that we don't have the uh, Falcon and the Commodores racing anymore. Uh, that was an absolute classic for the Australian race, the two Australian sports cars. Uh, fantastic to see, but uh, Chevy and Mustang do give up a pretty good uh, viewing experience. So we will... Uh, so, well, I'll certainly be enjoying it, that's for sure. And I'm, of course, backing Mustang, proud owner of an XR6. So uh, fantastic vehicles, Ford are. It's never done me wrong in the couple of years that I've owned it. And it is bloody quick, let me tell you that. Uh, but yeah, beautiful race conditions. That's all I have to say around uh, Bathurst. It's going to be an amazing race, a very quick one as well. And if you can switch on Channel 7 and watch it, it will be a fantastic way to spend a Sunday. And if you're at Bathurst as well, first of all, I'm green with envy. I'd love to be there watching the race to, uh, today. Maybe one day in the future, I will be there uh, watching it, but it is looking like a beautiful viewing experience as well. Now that is enough on the Australian weather scene. We're going to be given a lot more detailed forecast updates from here on. We've got a lot of forecasting stuff to be talking about in the next couple of days, especially with those storms around New South Wales and Queensland. And I do apologize for the lack of a video yesterday, uh, but yeah, it's been a fantastic uh, week for the channel as well. We've crossed through uh, 19,000 subscribers and we're nearing in now on 20,000. So make sure you are subscribed. Uh, it is free. And if you decide you don't like the content anymore, you can just unsubscribe later. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. The names are on screen right now and I could not run this show without them. So again, their support is amazing and incredible. They give me access to all of this fantasy software that I use. But that is all from me today and I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.